There's a new study out showing severe lung lesions after inoculation with Omicron BA1 in vivo in Syrian hamsters. And yes, lesions are associated with cancer formation and of course other pathologies. But what does this new data really mean? So in this video, I'll explain everything you need to know about this new study and we'll go over some graphs and charts. Also, I created some slides to simplify this study for you and we'll go over those as well. But before we begin, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell in the bottom right hand corner so you can be notified when my new videos come out. Also, click the social links in the description below. If you want more content like this, I post extra exclusive content on Substack and Patreon if you're interested. Anyways, let's get into this. So I broke everything down from this new study in my new Substack post. You really need to check it out. I'll post the link in the description below, but make sure you check it out because everything I talk about in this video is even further simplified there. Anyways, let me pull up that Substack post real quick so we can go over the specifics. Okay, one second. Now I'm going to scroll to where it says the data. And then right under that, it says the takeaway. Let me highlight that. Okay, now, for those of you that want a quick synopsis, here it is. Basically, what you should take from this is that Syrian hamsters inoculated with BA1 Omicron ended up having substantial lung pathology compared to those inoculated with Delta. Specifically, within five days of inoculation, foci formation or lesions were present in 50 to 90% of infected deep lung tissue. The problem here is that foci formation can be associated with severe pathology, malignancy, injury, you name it. And Omicron, according to French studies, is up to 103% more transmissible than Delta. So data suggests the possibility of an influx of injury because of Omicron's highly infectious nature. Anyways, back to the affected lung tissue. The affected areas were well delimited, meaning there's no question that some serious pathology was occurring. And some other reportings, affected areas became dark red and raised, suggesting heightened levels of inflammation. And that was actually evidenced by certain inflammatory cells in the lungs, like neutrophils and macrophages. Also, that indicates pneumonia or consolidation, by the way. And on that point, the interesting part about this study is that the same amount of consolidation was seen in both Omicron and Delta infected hamsters, indicating pneumonia was likely the same in both Delta infected and Omicron infected cohorts or hamsters. Now, hopping back in time to foci formation seen in the lungs after five days, substantial histological or tissue changes that rapidly occur like this don't necessarily play out in the real world. But regardless, this is something that warrants investigation. So keep that in mind. Now, how did researchers arrive to these conclusions? I have slides to explain that. So so hold on, let me scroll down here to slide number one. Okay, let me explain this. The far left column are SARS-CoV-2 strains, specifically Delta, Omicron, and an original strain that was lab produced called bavpap 1614 g So as you can see, researchers used those viruses to infect immortal Cal-U3 cells, those green cells in the middle there. So those Cal-U3 cells could propagate or replicate more virus, which would then be used in this study at a later time. Now, as you can see here, all those Cal-U3 cells were cultured or nurtured with growth medium like Opti MEM1, Glutamax, and also antibiotics like penicillin were used so the cells could remain clean and perform optimally while being infected to produce virus. Finally, those infected cells, those green ones in the middle, were harvested for 72 hours after infection. Now, the row on the far right is the final result. Essentially, they're different strains of SARS-CoV-2 researchers will use to infect the hamsters. Now, let's go to the next Next slide, one second, let me scroll down here. Now again, if you look at the far left column, the study was broken up into four groups, each group to be inoculated or sprayed with different variants. Once sprayed, the hamsters would inhale the virus, that would end up infecting them. So now the groups. Group one, hamsters that would be inoculated with Delta that had no previous infection with SARS-CoV-2, there were eight in that group. Now group two, those inoculated with Omicron, also having no previous infection, there were eight total of them. Now, 
group three, those were hamsters previously infected with SARS-CoV-2, BivPat1, then reinfected with Omicron. There were four hamsters total in that group. And group four, a control group, infected with nothing. They were essentially sprayed with PBS or phosphate buffered saline or placebo, if you will. Again, totaling four hamsters. Now moving on, check out the far right column over here. Those are the results. So horizontally, the top row are Delta exposed hamsters. Now look at the pair of lungs on the far top right. There was some evidence of foci formation. In other words, tissue damage caused by Delta. Also, these hamsters lost 14% of their body weight. But let me draw your attention to the Omicron exposed lungs. Look right here. They were substantially damaged. As you can see, they presented with multiple focal areas. That indicated by two stars, those little stars there you can see if you look close enough, a massive inflammation and red edematous raised structures. All of that affected up to 90% of the lung surface, the data said. Just look at how inflamed the lungs are here compared to the previous picture. They're a lot bigger too. Moving on, the third column shows the effects of an Omicron infection with prior immunity. Hold on one sec. I'm going to make this graph a little bit bigger. Now, as you can see, having previous immunity in this case prevented reduced body weight during illness. The lines stay at nearly 100%, meaning the hamsters maintained nearly 100% body weight. Now, if you look at the right, a re-challenge with a virus indicated by the green line after being previously infected revealed less genome detection or virus in tissues because of protection from pre-existing immunity. Finally, the bottom column was a control. Now, let me scroll to slide three. This slide explains collection methods. For example, nasal wash samples of infectious virus were found up to three days after inoculation. Okay, so let's move to the next column, throat swabs. Data from throat swabs revealed lower amounts of infectious virus with Omicron versus Delta by day one. And by the way, samples were taken every odd day for 21 days for both nasal wash and throat swabs. Now let's look down at the nasal turbinate column. The graph here shows most viral RNA was found mainly in nasal turbinates or the nose area. Essentially, nothing was found in the trachea. Also, if you continue to the far right, it shows the lung damage that we already talked about. That's what that image is. But let's move to the final column where it says weight. If you look here at this first graph, weights were measured every day for 10 days. Omicron and mock groups experienced no weight loss, while Delta exposed hamsters experienced 14% weight loss, peaking at four to five days. Now, finally, let me scroll down to this last slide. Okay, lungs. We already talked about this, but here's a bigger visual for you. The point is, Omicron infected hamsters experienced somewhat similar pathology to Delta infected hamsters. However, those with Omicron experienced more foci formation on average, more dark edematous inflamed red areas and raised areas, which affected up to 90% of lung tissue. So what does all of this mean? Well, first, there were some confounders in this data, for sure. Specifically, the CalU3 cells are an immortal cell line. Next, this was an experiment done in vivo that likely couldn't be carried out on humans for ethical reasons. And also, the length of this trial was too short and pathology occurred way too rapidly during the experiment. And finally, Syrian hamsters have a proclivity to be more sensitive to carcinogens or abrasive processes which leave them more susceptible to cancers and the lungs of these Syrian hamsters in the study developed lesions. All in all, the data from the study is something that needs to be considered. Who knows what lung damage could pop up down the line from Omicron exposure. This study means we need to continue keeping our eyes open and continue to analyze the data that comes out so we can be better informed. Anyways, those are the facts. We still need more data on this, but if there's anything you'd like to learn about in the future, please leave it in the comment section below and I'll see you on the next one.